Hi, I'm Clayton Jones with Atlas Copco. Today we're going to highlight a startup and shutdown procedure of the XAS 1800 PACE unit. It's with a C13 Caterpillar drive. So this is an 1800 CFM at 100 PSI designated unit. We'll also do at 1400 CFM at 200 PSI. So it's a variable pressure and flow unit. So we'll now go through the features and benefits as well as a startup through the controller. So as you can see, we have dual outlets at the rear of the machine. So we have a standard air outlet and a quality air outlet, which is an ISO uh, class one quality air, uh, re removing contaminant uh, from the air. Inside is the isolation valve that you're basically going to have open or closed, depending on the outlet that you're choosing for standard air or quality air. So as you can see here, the valve is open, so we're gonna utilize quality air as today's demonstration. Another feature on the machine, which is the most important, is our XC4004 controller, which allows us to have the PACE functionality. So that's our pressure adjusted through cognitive electronics regulation system. So basically going from a pneumatic regulated system to an electronic regulated system with the latest technology. So very simplified uh, controller, easy to use for the operator. We have a stop button and a start button. This is our typical load button on any one of our platforms of controllers. So it's, it's universal across the uh, controller platform. We have a measurements button that simply goes through all general measurements related to the compressor itself as far as pressure, flows, temperatures. We can scroll over. We, uh, when it's running, we'll be reading ECU data as well from the engine standpoint. And then <clears throat> we have our X always takes you back. We have our general settings button. This would be for a certified technician, uh, maybe using a service key or other uh, parameters to go in and change pressure set points, you know, operational controls, um, and enabling diagnostics if we have an engine OEM on site, one to hook up to the ECU. Finally, we have our alarms button. There are no alarms here, but this will store up to about the latest 20 alarms as far as anything warning or shutdown. Um, the warning will be across in a yellow uh, platform ribbon, and then the shutdown would be obviously in red. So you would acknowledge these alarms by hitting the enter button uh, to make them reset. So just a couple features, you know, we have running hours at the bottom. We'll always have RPMs. Uh, we have our gallons per hour on fuel. Uh, we have our def uh, fluid levels as well as fuel uh, fuel levels and here we're showing the pressure so this is our pressure screen so we also have a couple different main views so this is kind of the speedometer of a car looking view we go to our secondary view which is essentially the same thing just more in a block format um, where now we're reading left element and right element um, obviously ambient right now but when we're running you'll be able to see uh, the temperature settings there <clears throat> So as far as the PACE control system, we'll go back to our main view. So the way PACE works, it's very simple, is we hold our enter button for a couple seconds. We'll then see our set point here. So if we scroll over, we're in preset one. So that means it's 100 PSI. We can adjust in two PSI increments by holding the button all the way up to the 200 as mentioned before at 1400 CFM. So then we can also go right back down to 100. So this can be done during operation as well. So we'll leave it at 100 for today's demonstration. But if I hold it again, you'll see here, and then we go over to preset one. It also shows us our set point for volume. So we can set this, it's kind of a flow boost function. We can set the CFM, but that will disable the control of the pressure regulation. So it's more on a job site if you're requiring a certain CFM, the pressure will dictate itself. So most of the time I would say, 90% of the time we're gonna adjust by pressure, but this does have capabilities to uh, adjust through the CFM as well. So now we'll go through a uh, kind of a startup procedure um, you know, by audio, and then I'll actually do a live demonstration, which we won't be able to talk due to the noise level. But let's say we're starting the day. I'll go ahead and you know, I'll leave it powered up for purposes of demonstration, but we would start the day. We would enable our battery disconnect switch to the on position. We would do our checks going around and checking you know, connections, checking fluid levels, you know, everything in our instruction book that basically says to check before startup, we want to make sure we do that. With all the checks done and the job site is you know, secure, we've gone around a complete 360 of the machine. So now we're kind of in a ready to start function. So what we'll do is we'll start, hit the start button. The machine will go through a warm up period based on temperature or time. Um, and, and warmer climates, obviously the temperature will get there much quicker. And if in the colder climates, we might have to rely on a little bit more time. 
Once the set point is hit and we're ready to go, it will be basically say ready to load, which you'll see here in the demonstration coming up. And then at that point, everything checks out, we would hit the load button. So now we're loaded. We have our preset pressure of 100 PSI. So then from there, everything is ready to go. Today, we're just using, utilizing a muffler, but this essentially would be a hose or a pipe going to process. So we would come over here and we would very slowly, again, slowly open the service valve to the set point we need, fully open. If the, if the system is full, if it's not quite full, we may need to hold a little back pressure, but you're gonna hear it in the RPMs. We wanna hold high RPMs so that way we're getting max flow at our set point. So we would open our service valve very slowly. From there, you'll hear the RPMs come up. We come back over and we're gonna check all of our parameters on the controller, make sure everything checks out. You know, obviously we don't have any codes. And that's pretty much into the start procedure. Now the day goes on, everything is running very good. So now for a shutdown, the best principle is to come over to have the operator shut the service valve. It puts it in kind of a no load unloaded type state. And then when we want to go into a true unloaded state, once everything is shut down, we have no more air going to process. We would unload the unit. The machine will blow down at this point. We can hit our stop button. It will go through the same cool down cycle just as well as the uh, warm up. Cool down might take a little longer, upwards of about 180 seconds. Um, it's very important to let it go through that for two purposes of the compressor element, uh, to let it come down as well as most importantly the engine. The engine needs to cool down in a proper uh, sequence and not just uh, shutting down. So at that point, the cool down stop, uh, is complete and the machine goes into a stop state. We can then power down the controller and then vice versa, we go in and we kill the battery disconnect. Now I will say on the battery disconnect, it's best there's a light here that you will see. So we need to wait until this light is not illuminated before we fully kill power. That's tied to the DEF fuel rail system. We wanna make sure the purge is complete. Colder weather environments, we could get freezing. So we're just purging the DEF system free and clear of the diesel exhaust fluid. Now once all that's done, the machine is completely powered down. So that's pretty much the start up and stop down. We'll kind of do a uh, live demonstration, but again, there will be some noise. One last feature is an emergency stop. This is for true emergencies. This is not the proper way to shut down the machine by any means. It does a lot of damage to the engine at full RPMs. There's a lot of torque on the coupling. You could damage the coupling between the, the basically the engine and the compressor element as kind of the drive system. So this is for emergencies only. Um, that kind of completes the audio portion of the startup and stop down. And so now we'll go through a live example. So now we'll go through a live startup. As mentioned, it will be uh, a little loud, so basically just a visual. But uh, we went through the startup and stop down. So I'm going to uh, start the unit now, and it'll start the, the uh, warm up procedure as we mentioned.
So that concludes our startup and stop down of a XS1800 Pace with a C13 Cat. If you have any further questions, please call our technical support team at 1-800-732-6762 and follow the prompts for air compressor support. And they'll be happy to assist you with any operational questions.